so one of the challenges about talking and writing and even I would say imagining Vilnius it's in the way that it's, it's quite central in Europe and European history and, and geography, and by some definitions, geographical measurements is at the center of Europe, actually. Uh, and yet it's almost unknown in terms of sort of kind of larger historical narrative of Europe. So talking about Vilnius, it's a very challenging, very often to convey some kind of a story that, that's relevant to, to other places. Uh, so, so this book came out from two angles. One of them is that Vilnius has been since 14th century, since sort of its establishment, is always extremely multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious cities. And the second part of Vilnius is that, especially in the modern age, like from the 19th century on, it's also had a very large diaspora. So uh, it's sort of kind of like around the world. And it's mostly because of the sort of ideological um, and, and sort of kind of historical you know, movements the way the city's been occupied by different sort of kind of forces, et cetera, et cetera, powers. And the second one, when I was starting to research on the city, I discovered that there are probably more, as surprisingly as it sounds, more material, so to speak, about the city, about Vilnius, uh, outside the city of Vilnius, rather than the city itself. So, so my idea was at first to write a story of the city, basically how all of those different narratives come together. But I realized that while doing research and writing that every time I sort of come with those narratives into the city, uh, they would lead me out of the city because of this kind of diaspora or something like that, right? So in a way, the writing about Vilnius always, always, be, always is the writing about other places. I did a little bit of research on that specific topic because, because as I mentioned, because Vilnius is like such a sort of diasporic city in a way, so anywhere you go, you know, you find kind of like, you know, sort of connections that most people wouldn't even notice. It's like, oh, you know, um, uh, so so in, Ch in China, China settings, there's certain connections that are very strong during the World War II, where Jewish refugees uh, from Vilna came, from Vilnius, Vilna, sort of Vilna in Yiddish, um, came to Shanghai, where sort of via Japan, and about more than a thousand of sort of refugees from, from Vilnius. And that is probably the largest group of Vilnius Jews, of Vilnius connected Jews, who survived the Holocaust intact as a community. The challenge for a writer in, for writing about Vilnius is that, yeah, as you, you said, it's a character, and yet it's a split personalities. So the challenge is always, it's always is that the, this character has speaks in, literally in tongues. <laughs> it's like always a very different languages or whatever. And, and none of them, so to speak, kind of easily communicate with each other. So writing about Vilnius does always is that it's always, always a process of translation. It's not necessarily that you can be in Vilnius, it's in the city, but also in two different places, so to speak. You can, you know, I, again, I, I, I have friends and I met people who would come in to visit, you know, their grandparents, so to speak, kind of city or something like that. They would come from New York or something like that. And they would be in Vilnius and, and simultaneously, they would be obviously in very two different places, right? And one is the contemporary Vilnius and the other is the Vilnius of their own family, so to speak, roots. And they don't necessarily match. So in the way being by local to me, it's, it's connecting those things. It's kind of imagining a city as as offering this unique possibility to have a dual, if you want to call it, sort of kind of like a split, again, sort of if you use that metaphor, split views of, of the world. Because in, in a way you can be, you know, it's kind of magic. It's a magical trick. You can be at the same time in two different places. Well, this is actually related to sort of to, to my family and, and especially actually I mentioned my grandmother. So it's a, it's more or less her story. Uh, so I have a narrative that it's in, in three three versions. One is like, you know, what comes from, for example, from my grandmother. Another what comes from those letters because so much is unsaid in those letters. So until, and then there's a pile of files of KGB that's sort of kind of they surveilling that whole, you know, so it's a it's a fascinating and, and frightening experience to sort of to look at your family from from this sort of kind of you know 
literally KGB perspective and, and discovered in many ways um, how, how all those three parts, how those, those three components come together, you know, so anyway, so, so yeah, that's, that's my, my biggest challenge now to write that kind of story. It's a, it's a saga and it's a saga probably that comes literally from those three, three different, different angles.